assalamu alaikum everyone uh, welcome to me213 after midterm exam and we will have online uh, lectures due to the current pandemic issue and this is uh, lecture number 25 and we will start chapter number 5 after midterm exam so as you see that we already covered chapter 1 till 4 and we will covering chapter number 5 that is related to design and analysis of the beam uh, and design analysis and design of beam for the bending so first we will just uh, we will have introduction what are beam structures okay and then uh in order to uh, have to analyze or design the beam we should know what will be the sh shape force and bending moment on the beam so for that we will uh, we will draw shape force and bending moment diagrams and first we will draw shape force and bending moment diagram using static equilibrium condition that is sum of forces is equal to 0 and sum of moment is equal to 0 and next topic we will discuss relation among load shear and bending moment and that is another way to draw shear force and bending moment diagram and that is also known as graphical method okay and in the end of this chapter we will uh, discuss uh, the design of prismatic beam for the bending okay uh, let's see what is beam so objective of this uh, chapter is to analyze and design of the beam and what are beams beams are the structural member it can be a mechanical structural member that is designed to support transfer load that is load that act perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the beam and this load can be a point load or it can be a distributed load so beam member basically they resist applied load by combination of internal transfer force and the bending moment now if you look at the bottom this aircraft wing that can be treated as a uh, cantilever beam and uh, over here this is a fixed end and uh, we have a load due to this engine uh, these engines we have a load acting down one direction and there is a load on the beam or the wing uh, due to weight of the wing as well now this aircraft wing Uh, under stationary condition can treated as a cantilever beam because it's a fixed and the on this end it fixed over here and uh, it's a free end over here so this wing can be analyzed as a cantilever beam and if you look at this type of crane that is known as overhanging crane and also uh, considered as a overhanging beam uh, now it is a support on these two location then there is a counterweight over here and this can uh, this beam or this crane used to move container from this location and load it on the ship so when it's loading so there will be a weight of the container over here as well and the weight obviously move from one point to another point but we can take as a static condition and uh, this type of beam is known as overhanging beam okay now uh, a small reading assignment for you guys okay uh, just look at different mechanical component and that can be uh, analyzed as a beam so just look at different mechanical component and we will discuss on the uh, on the interactive session uh, of this chapter 
Now let's consider this beam structure. And we have a beam AB. And the transverse loading of the beam can be classified as a concentrated load. For example, this P1 and this P2 are the concentrated load where W is a distributed load acting on this beam AB. Okay. And these applied load result in internal force that is shear force. And with that shear force, we can find the shear stress distribution. And this we will discuss in next chapter, that is chapter 6. And the bending couple, that is uh, for, for from the normal stress distribution. And in this chapter, we will find what will be the bending moment for the beam structure with the uh, transverse load. And this load can be concentrated or distributed load. Now, when we can find, if we find what are the bending couple or bending moment acting on the beam, that is internal bending moment, we can find what will be the stresses, normal stresses due to the bending moment. And obviously using the uh, flexural stress formula that we studied in previous chapter, chapter four. So uh, using this formula, we can find the stresses if we know the cross section. And if we know the allowable bending moment, uh, we know the material, uh, we know the uh, bending moment, what will be the bending moment, then we can find what will be the cross section of that beam structure. So in order to design a beam, uh, we have to find the location and magnitude of the largest bending moment. So in this chapter, we will, uh, we will try to find where we have maximum bending moment and using that bending moment, uh, how we can design the beam structure. Okay. Whereas the shear stress uh, that we will discuss in next chapter, chapter six, we will use the shear stress in the next chapter. Okay, now before uh, going to that, uh, we have different types of beam, classifications of beam uh, based on the support. Uh, for example, if you look at this beam, this is simply supported beam. Uh, we have a uh, pin joint or pin connection at the end. This one is a fixed and this is on the roller support. And this is known as simply supported beam. And you can find the reaction at these two ends, uh, these two ends by simply uh, using static equilibrium condition. Now this is known as overhanging beam because of this overhanging portion. And again, this is a statically indeterminate beam because we can find reaction easily on these two location by static equilibrium condition. And this is uh, another uh, cantilever beam. We have a fixed end over here, no pin joint. So on reaction, we have one force and bending moment. And we can find that force and bending moment and this is again statically determined beams and this type of beam is no unknown as cantilever beam. Now, there are other, uh, other classification. Uh, those are statically indeterminate beams. For example, this one, we have theory three reaction, but we cannot find these three reaction with a static alone that sum of forces is equal to zero and sum of moment is equal to zero. So for those these type of beams, we have to consider uh, deflection or deformation. So deformation. So with that deformation, we can find the reaction. Uh, but this we will discuss in chapter nine. Okay. So this is another type of uh, static indeterminate beam. So we have a fixed end over here and pin support over here. So we have two reaction forces and one bending moment and this is fixed beam and over here we have two reaction forces and two bending moment that we cannot find with uh, using static equilibrium condition so we have to consider deformation as well so in this chapter we will only considering the statically determinant beams now 
uh, how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram and again this is for using the static equilibrium condition that sum of forces is equal to zero and sum of moment is equal to zero so how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram so so in order to find shear force and bending moment diagram uh, sorry in order to find uh, the maximum normal stress and shear stress so we have to find the maximum value of internal shear force and bending couple so shear force and bending moment uh, per couple uh, at a point are determined by passing section so what we will do uh, first we will have to find the reaction at a and b what is the reaction at a and b okay for example for this beam what are the reaction at a and b and after that what we will do we will take a section and when we draw section uh, we draw free body diagram for that section okay so there must be an internal shear force and internal bending moment and we are interested to find these values what are the value of this bending moment and shear force so what we will do we will have a shear force and bending couple at the point are, uh, are determined by passing a section through the beam by applying an equilibrium analysis on the beam and that equilibrium analysis is sum of forces and sum of moment is equal to zero now uh, we have to be careful about the sign convention now if you are taking section from um, this from this uh, left to right then shear force acting downward will be positive and the bending moment acting counterclockwise we will take positive but if we are taking section from right to left for example shown over here so shear force acting upward will be take positive and the bending moment acting counterclockwise will be considered as a positive okay so we have to be very careful about the sign convention so how we will we are taking a section now if we look at this again figure we have a simply supported beam okay uh, with a point load p1 and p2 and we have a distributed load of w now this simply supported beam uh, if we consider this section let's take a section at c and again following the sign convention that the shear force acting downward will be take positive and bending moment counterclockwise will take positive because we are taking section from left to right okay now if you look at this is written as x so this distance will become x x now in order to find this shear force v what we will do so we will take sum of forces is equal to zero and if we write that v will be positive now we have p1 that is also acting downward direction so we will take positive p1 and this distributed shear force we will convert into concentrated one this will become w a. let's consider that this is a so this distributed load we will convert into point load and that will be wa and again that will be acting downward direction so that plus wa and ra is acting upward so minus ra is equal to zero now when we solve it we will get the value of v that is our shear force now for the bending moment so we will take bending moment at c uh, because if you take at c so we can eliminate v over here so sum of moment is equal to zero so we will take sum of moment is equal to zero and if we want to write so that will become m uh, we have to follow sign convention at acting counterclockwise will be positive now m plus now m plus 
we have wa that is force and that distance will be become x minus some value so let me write that distance as x minus b and we have p2 okay that is again acting in the same direction of m so plus p2 now the distance let's take this distance as uh, this distance let us take as b sorry c so we can write this will become x minus c and we have ra multiplied by x minus R A multiplied by x is equal to zero. When we solve it, we will get the value of bending moment, and this will be, of course, the internal bending moment. Okay. Now we can also take a section from right to left. Now, in this case, you have to be careful. Uh, this distance now it will become L minus x. L is the length of the beam. So over here, L is length of the beam. Now, if we want to write the shear force, so shear force, internal shear force. So we have V prime. Plus RB. Now again following the sign convention minus p2 is equal to 0 and m prime will be if we again you take moment about this c so m prime plus p2 now taking this distance let's take this distance as d so that will become L minus X minus T minus now RB into L minus X and that will be equal to zero and if by solving it you will get the value of M prime now since we are taking section at C if we take uh, section as shown on this figure uh, this figure it will give us the same value at C if we can taking this figure so in order to and by finding these shear force and bending moment value we can plot it and that will become our shear force and bending moment diagram okay Okay, let's see a concept application. Cross shear force and bending moment diagram of a simply supported beam of a span L subjected to single concentrated load P and at its midpoint. So this stage of load P acting at the midpoint, the length of the beam is L, and we have to find uh, what will what is we have to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for this beam. Okay, now. First, we have to find the reaction, and, and I presume that you can find the reaction by drawing free body diagram. Uh, so beam. So we have a reaction R A over here. R B, and there's a force acting at the center of the P P. And if you take moment at A is equal to 0 and moment at B is equal to 0, so you can find value of RA and RB and it will be equal to P by 2. P by 2. Okay. Now, uh, now we want to draw shear force and bending moment diagram. Okay. Now let's see. Okay. Uh, now let's take a section here and we are considering 
uh, this portion only and let's draw free body diagram for this portion so what we have if I draw this section so we have a P by 2 RA so we have a shear force internal shear force acting V downward we have bending moment M internal bending moment over here and this distance let's take this distance as x now if i want to write sum of shear force is equal to zero so i can write v minus p by 2 is equal to zero and this leads me to shear force is equal to p by 2 and if you look at that beam so this shear force is valid from A to C means if I take any section between A and C the shear force is equal to P by 2 now if I want to write bending moment so sum of bending moment again bending moment we will take on this section so this point we will take bending moment and if you want to write that is equal to M minus P by 2 X, X is equal to 0 now M is equal to P by 2 into X now at uh, if you look at the beam at this point A X is equal to 0 means moment will be 0 and it will be increased with the length of the beam so if when it will be a, at point C it will be simply P by 2 multiplied by L by 2 so if we want, if we want to write that the moment at X is equal to 0 that is A so value of moment is equal to 0 now just before C so X is equal to L by 2 so that moment will be equal to P L by 4 now if you look at this equation that moment is changing linearly it was 0 at A and it is P L by 4 at uh, at the mid span now let's take a section over here now entirely up to us that we are taking section from A to this uh, or B from B so let's first take from A and we draw free body diagram so we have a reaction at A that is P by 2 we have P so sign convention v downward will be equal to positive and we have moment acting like this and again this section let's take x okay now shear force we can write v plus p minus p by 2 is equal to 0 and this is this lead us to v is equal to minus p by 2 now if you look at this shear force now from C to B the value of shear force will be minus P by 2 okay so it is positive from A to C that is P by 2 and it will be negative from C to B and value will be minus P by 2 now regarding the shear force so we can write equation so that equation will be simply uh, M plus P this whole distance is X X and we have to 
minus uh, this distance that is l by 2 so minus p minus uh, sorry x minus l by 2 and we have minus p by 2 into x is equal to 0 now m we can write p if we take p common okay so and taking on the other side so that will become minus x by 2 minus l by 2 and this will be equal to 0 ah sorry this will be equal to m is equal to and uh, sorry this will become plus l by 2 now if you remember that at x is equal to l that is point p so this term m will become 0 at p that is when x is equal to l now at c when x is equal to l by 2 so if we put the value so moment will become p l by 4 that is when x is equal to l by 2 that is at c now if you look at this value it is same as we calculated over here okay now now we can take a section uh, from B to C or we can say from right to left so what happen if we take section from right to left okay so let again taking section over here now this time we are considering only this part so if you draw free body diagram So we have reaction at B that is P by 2 and we have shear force now in this case shear force V acting upward will be take positive and moment acting con clockwise direction we will take positive and this will become L minus X so simply V plus P by 2 is equal to 0 and V is equal to minus P by 2 now that is the same as we calculated previously now if we consider if we write the moment so again moment we are taking on this point so m minus p by 2 multiply by l minus x is equal to 0 and m is equal to p by 2 l minus x now at x is equal to l that is b so moment is equal to 0 now if you put x is equal to l by 2 that is location c so it will give us the same value that is p l by 4 now we have uh, the value of shear force at different location now we have uh, from A to C shear force is equal to P by 2 and from C to B the shear force is minus P by 2 and we know that from A to C the bending moment was uh, M is equal to we have the value of p x by 2 and at c it was and it's changing linearly and at c it was m is equal to p l by 4 that is at c and at b and at a sorry at a m is equal to 0 now if we plot it the shear force 
and bending moment will be like this so from starting from a to c so shear force will be p by 2 from c to b it will be negative p by 2 then the bending moment will be 0 at a so it will increase linearly if you look at the equation that is px by 2 and it will be the value will be maximum at c and that is 1 by 4 pl and again it will be 0 at b so when we plot it we can find uh, the maximum value of bending moment that is pl by 4 and using that bending moment we can find the maximum stresses Okay, let's see another uh, concept problem. Uh, we have a cantilever beam and of the length L and it's a free end at A, fixed end at B and there's a distributed load, uniformly distributed load W acting on that cantilever beam. Now, uh, we, want, we are interested to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for that cantilever beam. Okay, now, uh, first, uh, what we will do, we treat as a, uh, uh, let's take a section between A and B. Let's take a section over here and considering uh, this section from A to over here, let's take, let mark at C and that distance is X and let's draw free body diagram for that. We are interested to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for this section. Uh, this beam so if you draw section so let's take this distance is x so any arbitrary point okay and we have a shear force now following the sign convention acting downward we will take positive and moment acting counterclockwise direction we take a positive and we have a distributed force acting on the beam so this force we have a force distributed force acting on that beam uniformly distributed force okay let me write w over here and we can convert this uniformly distributed force into concentrated force acting at the center and the value we can write w x and it will be acting at the center and this distance will be simply x by 2 okay now Let's write sum of forces is equal to zero. So we can write V plus WX that is a concentrated force uh, equivalent to the distributed force that will be equal to zero. And V will be equal to minus WX. Now at A, this lead x is equal to 0 so value of v will be equal to 0 now at b x will be equal to l length of the beam and the shear force internal shear force will be equal to minus w into l now if you look at this expression for these for this type of cantilever beam with a distributed load the shear force is changing linearly and it's zero at free end and it is a maximum at fixed end and the value is minus w by l now if we consider sum of moment is equal to zero so we can write m plus wx is the force and the distance is simply x by 2 and this will be equal to zero so force multiplied by distance is equal to zero. So m we can write minus w x square by two. Now uh, again, if you look at at 
x a which is lead us to x is equal to 0 the moment is equal to 0 and at b where x is equal to l sorry l so moment is minus w l square by 2 so if you look at the expression of shear force and bending moment so if we plot it considering at location a and location b so if i simply plot it so the shear force and bending moment uh, if i simply consider that again v is we know that the expression v is equal to minus wx and the bending moment m is minus wx square by 2 now if we simply plot it the shear force it will be 0 at a and it will be linear and it will be maximum at b and the value is minus wl that is shear force so we have a shear force at vertical axis and the length of the beam on the horizontal axis and if you plot shear force a bending moment again so x and bending moment on the uh, uh, is a vertical axis uh, if you plot it so that bending moment is one order higher than the shear force and it will be a parabolic and maximum value will be at b and that will be equal to minus w l square by 2 now if you look shear force and bending moment so it will be linear uh, shear force is changing linearly it will be 0 at a and it will be maximum at b and if we look at bending moment diagram so it will be 0 again at a maximum at b but it's a parabolic now if you compare shear force and bending moment so bending moment will be always one order higher than the shear force so again this that is important thing to remember that bending moment will always the curve of bending moment will always one order higher than the shear force okay now, uh, what we look at this chapter so we look at this how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram using static equilibrium uh, equilibrium applied to the section so what we are doing we are using free body diagram to entire beam to find reaction then we take a section between load application and we determine the shear force and bending moment diagram and the distributed load can be replaced on each free body diagram by the result and using this method we draw shear force and bending moment diagram and this shear force and bending moment uh, 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 with that we find where the where we have maximum bending moment acting on the beam okay now uh, i will request to go through sample problem 5.1 and 5.2 that is related to this section 5.1 and these are some assignment problem uh, from section 5.1 and we will also uh, i will also do the uh, lecture uh, and we will look at some problem related to section 5.1 and 5.2 and that will be lecture number 27 uh, i will upload that lecture so thank you very much and see you uh, inshallah